This program was brought to you by Kola Institute of Venture at Tel Aviv University. Uh, question, what is the optimal venture ecosystem for deep innovation and how to do it? This is the question. It's basically a two-part question. What it is and how we do it. Simple question. It's a simple question, but of course there are many, many answers to this. And in order to accomplish that, uh, what I want to do now is just to give you a short brief on what uh, uh, I call the framework for this ecosystem and basically outline the four different actors, general actors in the system. And then I'm going to talk about how we want to work uh, today uh, and sort of the spirit uh, of today. Uh, a word about what event is venture. People already start to ask me what, what is venture. So uh, when we uh, thought about that uh, for our first uh, publication, we essentially tried to narrow a little bit the concept of venture. And we focused on three things that define the kind of venture that we are interested in, because there are many kinds of ventures, social ventures, entrepreneurship, and lifestyle ventures. But the kind of ventures that we are looking at has three components. It's new. It's something that was not done in the past. It has high potential, and behind the term high potential is both the impact on society and the impact on investors. Because when we're looking at venture, we're looking both from the point of view of the innovation as well as from the point of view of the financing. And last but not least, it's capital-based. Meaning, if you pour in capital on it, there's a bigger chance you'll get higher value faster. You can use the capital to capture market share, etc. So that's sort of our definition for the sake of what we are thinking uh, about venture. Uh, I'm not going to delve into this whole uh, model. The key is just to outline the four actors as we uh, see them. The number, uh, yeah, for, we'll start actually from the bottom, the entrepreneurs. The entrepreneurs are the ones that are coming up with the ideas. They are generating the new notions, the new um, ideas that creates. Each of these things is either one idea or a family of ideas uh, to be covered. Then we have the people who are actually putting money into it, the venture capital. And this is a, an umbrella term for all the people that actually look at the um, innovator, at the entrepreneur, and give them the money to push things forward. Again, stems from our assumption that if you put in money into something, you'll get it faster, bigger chances of, of success. Beyond them, we have the institutional investors. And this is an important point, especially for us in Israel. We're not so familiar with this. But at the end of the day, the people with a lot of money, as Jeremy would like to call them, the pension funds. Uh, of course, that's one term. But that, uh, the pension funds are the one that symbolizes the people who actually put money inside the venture capital firms. And they allow them. Now, if the pension funds are not getting, at the end of the day, returns, from the venture capital, they're not going to put money into it. And if not put money into venture capital, they're not going to get money into entrepreneurs. So that's the challenge. These are the third. And the fourth, and perhaps the most important uh, player, as we learned from Robin, right? We'll talk about it in a second, is the public authorities, which is a, a, a nice term for governments, essentially. Because at the end of the day, it is government that create the infrastructure for the entire ecosystem. When we talk about public authorities, because it can also be city-wide or region-wide, uh, et cetera. If we look carefully um, at each of them, you'll see that there is a certain value chain. And this is the value chain that we chose. That probably there's some other ways to represent it. The reason I'm showing this, because when we talk about a venture ecosystem, for deep innovation, we are looking at new definitions, new structures, different structures for these value chains, essentially. We're looking to restructure, rebuild, re-understand the specific value chains in the game. And I just showed you these two, but of course you can come up with, it with your own. So that's the challenge that we have here. Why do we have a framework? Why do we need this framework? Uh, the framework is really a way for us to name the different phases. So we are all on a common base. Uh, it's just a mechanism, 
you may change the different uh, names of the phases, etc. but the principle is what uh, counts. So that's the first thing. It basically allows us to understand the internal dynamics within each value chain. What is the source of the ideas? And surprisingly, when Ram Weisbord here from Teva is going to talk about his thing, without us talking to each other, he also talks about value chains. Because if you understand the value chains and where value being created, you can modify, you can change it to adapt to new conditions. We also understand the relationship between the value chains. What affects, why is some of the limited partners today are investing directly in entrepreneurs, which is something they have not done in the past. And we can see several trends and changes. And let me give you just one example, which I think symbolizes or epitomizes the changes that we see now in the value chain. And this is the example of uh, Intellectual Ventures. Intellectual Ventures is a fund out of Seattle that essentially deals with ideas. Anybody here familiar with Intellectual Ventures? Excellent. So what do they do? Oh, OK, Shmuel, of course. What do they do? They encourage people to come up with interesting ideas. Once they come up with the idea, they simply pay them just for the idea. Right, Shmuel? Shmuel is one of the most prolific investor in inventors. And you come up with the idea, and you get the money for it, and that's it. How much money do you get for idea? Depends. Three, OK. So we don't need to start up companies. We don't need to publish papers. We just need to come up with ideas. This is a very big change, because on one hand, it encourages the entrepreneurs to just stay in the idea level, and it enables many more people to come into the area of innovation. And on the other hand, if you are a company, you don't need to invent the idea. You can just go to their website and license the idea. Big, big change, intellectual ventures. We can talk about them later. And this is one example of a change on this wonderful ecosystem. I had many questions about what is deep innovation. So this is a time for uh, a little confession. Con uh, I want to confess here. We just invented this term. We thought it's a very good term. But it already got, uh, so we, we, we try to um, uh, define it. Um, again, for the purposes of this workshop, and I'm sure we can realign this definition. A deep innovation is somewhere in the middle. What does it mean in the middle? Look at the example. I think that's the best way to think about it. On one hand, we have web things, and maybe cyber, and applications, and internet stuff, and maybe IT, enterprise software, things like that. These are things that are relatively easy. On the other hand, we have huge things, like CERN or NASA. In the middle, we have deep innovation. It's very simple. So it's the amount of money, it's how many years it takes, it's the risk, and it's the potential value. So for the purposes of today, and I'm sure by the end of the day, we may define it in a different way, for the purposes of today, this is, this is deep innovation. How are we going to attack this with all the uh, very smart people that we have gathered in the room? So we start with a very clear question. I think this is a very important point. The question is very clear. We bring lots of good people to the room, and I think this is your part, right? Thank you very much for coming. We will start with a short overview of the um, state of venture. Uh, we have Ellie and Robin giving us from different perspective. I will introduce them in a second. We continue with eight examples. And you see the examples over here. Um, Jonathan is going to run that section. And this is something that we have done in the last three months with the people who are the leaders of the uh, brain and nano initiative. These will be our small case studies to think about. And every one of them is extremely interesting. Then we work in groups. Each of the groups here will actually get one of the posters led by the leader. And the scientist, the researcher behind this, is going to be in the group to assist you in thinking about this. So the actual example is going to be the way to think about deep innovation. What do you need? What are some of the characters that you need in order to do that? We reflect and think at the end. 
with Jeremy and the panelists uh, at the end uh, after we hear the summary from the group leaders. And of course, we'll continue to work. I see this definitely as something that we will uh, continue to think about. What we uh, plan to do uh, approximately in a year is to develop a collection of policy recommendations on deep innovation. Uh, basically, from the people who are here, I'm sure there's going to be lots of ideas and people that would like to express their opinions. And the way the Institute works is that we summarize this into a, a special uh, issue. I will show to you um, in a second. It's basically a publication, which you will all get at 5 o'clock as the part of the reception. This publication will allow you to see the kind of work that we are doing uh, further to summarize a topic. So the idea of deep innovation for us is a year-long effort, as, as uh, the president said, and uh, Moshe, it's a start. And of course, I want us all to have fun during the day with lots of good food and, and good companies. So that's more or less the plan of the day. Few minor things, technical things, just to make sure everybody on the same page before uh, I will call uh, the first uh, speaker. So, a timetable. So we have a very strict timetable. We want to accomplish a lot. Don't worry, I'll follow that. Don't worry about that. Uh, we have work time that will allow all of us to get to know each other more. We are now already sitting in the groups and we will continue to do over, over lunch and then backward in the uh, summary. Uh, I want to remind everybody with the phones, you can either uh, uh, um, set them on silent or, or do something like that. Uh, we, are, we will try to operate on uh, Chatham House rules, which means you can say whatever you want, but nobody can quote you. That's the bottom line here. Uh, we will try to have fun all the way. Uh, and I think the, the bottom line is that once we I brought everybody to the room, then my job is over. I think the... Uh, I'm bringing you the, to the floor to get your ideas and, and generate some new and interesting insight. Uh, welcome, and thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Uh, last thing, if you see somebody with yellow, it means you can ask them questions, right? People here? Yes, 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 people here with yellow. These are people. Odea. Etc. Etc. Um, Eli, I want to welcome um, Professor Eli Talmor. Eli Talmor is a professor of the London Business School and founding chairman of the, our institution. Um, now you know there are all kinds of chairmen. Uh, Eli is the kind of chairman who actually does work, and a lot of it. So uh, he's leading the initiative on what we call the history of venture. Uh, and I've asked them to give us a brief on this thing and through that give you the kind of work that we're doing. Eli, please. Thank you. Thank you. This program was brought to you by Collar Institute of Venture at Tel Aviv University.